blessed be and welcome to the Circle of Hecker. I'm Lady Amaris. Calling people fake witches on YouTube seems to be the flavour of the month. That and many others leaving comments on channels saying, you are doing this or that wrong and you aren't a real witch because you don't do X, Y or Z. I've had similar comments left on my videos and I find it hilarious. It is interesting to see the mindset involved when it comes to the need to make comments such as this, and to a lesser degree comments in the vein of, find Jesus or you are going to go to hell. I thought I would take this opportunity to discuss what this behaviour really is, and how to avoid getting sucked into the vortex of doom that is the ego-driven witch, or religious zealot, or just plain troll. And because it would be way more interesting than looking at me as we discuss this, a little bit of undesirable human nature which unfortunately is amplified by the anonymity and accessibility the internet seems to provide, I thought I would illustrate the absurdity of engaging in this kind of behaviour by using the official gods of the internet, cats, to convey some of the concepts I will address in this video. Due to the subject matter, viewer discretion is advised. The following video is a combination of facts and personal opinions designed to make you think. Any characters portrayed in this video are purely fictional and in no way represent individuals either alive or dead, living in an alternate reality, or the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Also, in no way am I intentionally disrespecting any religion or belief system. If you are easily triggered by ideas, views and concepts that are not your own, or challenge your world view, please stop, breathe, and watch all of the video before making a troll-like comment. Maybe watch it twice, no, three times, then share the video with all your friends. Think about the content for a week and if you still feel the burning need to comment, please do so. But remember, be nice. The title of this video is Fake Witches vs Real Witches, Witchcraft in the Box of Dogma and How to Avoid Being Sucked In. Now I am sure that most of you already know what dogma means, but so that we're on the same page, dogma means the doctrine or belief in a religion, a political system, a company, a way of life, a diet, or you get my drift. The literal meaning of dogma in ancient Greek was something that seems true. These days, dogma is more absolute. If you believe in a certain religion or philosophy, you believe in its dogma or core assumptions. If you belong to a cult, and by cult I am talking about your culture, so your culture that believes that, let's say, cupcake consumption is the only true path to enlightenment, then you follow the cupcake dogma. Dogma, once adopted, is accepted without question. Let me say that again. Dogma, once adopted, is accepted without question. So why without question? Because dogma is simply principles, beliefs, morals or doctrines generally held to be true by members of an organization, movement, family or profession, which are formally stated and authoritatively proclaimed. So we have one reason. Authority. The authority has said it is so, so it must be true. We all have to eat cupcakes or we are all going to go to hell. The second is repetition. You repeat something often enough and eventually it will be believed. This is used in advertising all the time. It is used in school, in politics, repeat, repeat, repeat. It is a form of brainwashing 
and was used very successfully by the Nazi Party in World War II. I will illustrate this with a quote from Hitler. Make the lie big, keep repeating it, and eventually they will believe it. So authority and repetition. That's how dogma becomes dogma. But why is it needed? Control. And the main ingredient in maintaining control is fear. It is my understanding that true witchcraft is about empowerment, not about being a doormat. But at the same time, you should not be so full of your own empowerment that you turn into a douchebag. It is about being in balance with nature and yourself and not being afraid to explore, question, experiment and create. One tool of control we see parroted continually is the rule of three. What you send out comes back to you times three. The original concept of the rule of three is not how it, was under, is not how it is understood today. The whole idea of what you send out comes back to you times three, I think actually gained momentum with the movie The Craft and has become a Wiccan pseudo-dogma ever since. From my research, the rule of three is the misinterpretation of a passage in a work of fiction written by Gerald Gardner called High Magic's Aid, where the protagonist undergoes an initiation rite in which he is taught, mark well when thou receivest good, so equally art thou bound to return good threefold. A far cry from anything you send out into the world will return to you threefold. It actually means that what you do to a witch should be returned by them threefold. The witch is the agent of the threefold response not the universe. Now why would we have this? You are the agent of the threefold response, then reworked to a more Christian style do unto others spiel that pervaded a movie about witchcraft which then seeped into Wiccan doctrine. Control. As I said, witchcraft is about personal empowerment, making and following your own rules, questioning and walking your own path. So one hand, you have a movie that is aimed at teenage girls, well, mostly. And on the surface, it is about empowerment of women. But on the other hand, it says you had better be good girls or you will all go crazy and have all the bad things you did come back to you three times worse. So control through fear. One of the most effective means of keeping society in line is fear. Fear is a very effective tool used by governments, leaders, politicians, kings, presidents, religions, to keep us believing and abiding by certain rules or guidelines. Fear of the consequences for breaking these rules keeps the masses from doing so, and if indoctrinated early and long enough, also means that they will police themselves, so the masses stay in line with little or no effort from the leaders. But why would fear need to be instilled in what could only be thought of as a fringe belief system known as Wicca and witchcraft. In the 1990s and 2000s, Wicca began to become ingrained in popular culture. This was helped and fueled not only in entertainment, but also by the rise of the internet. Solitary witches and Wiccans around the world had previously had little way of communicating amongst one another. The internet allowed them to do so, also giving people access to information that they would normally only find in obscure books. Two most recent American religious identification surveys declared Wicca as one of the fastest growing spiritual identifications in America 
with an average annual growth of 143% for the period of 1990 to 2001. This is from 8,000 to 134,000. This is US data and is very similar in Canada and Australia. There was a cross-pollination of ideas. Aspects of Wicca were incorporated into the New Age movement and many Wiccans took on New Age beliefs and practices. Wicca was also taken up by popular entertainment. In 1996, the film The Craft was released about four teenagers who are corrupted by their power. The same year the television series Sabrina the Teenage Witch appeared. In 1997 saw Buffy the Vampire Slayer and then 1998 the TV series Charmed and the film Practical Magic. Wicca, the public face of witchcraft, had become popular it was cool and mysterious, but at the same time needed to be watered down for the mainstream and Hollywoodized, hence what I call American Eclectic Wicca, or more accurately, Popular Culture Eclectic Wicca. Riding the wave of growing interest in alternative spirituality, which was moving away from Christianity to a more self-guided questioning system, this meant that the wave needed to be steered in a manageable direction. Checks and controls needed to be put in place. You couldn't have a generation becoming self-aware, practicing magic, questioning authority and not doing what they were told. So very clear codes were programmed into Wiccan popular culture. And with repetition, they have been taken as fact and now you have a situation where Wiccans are policing other Wiccans and also spreading that need to control over other magical systems. In my two previous videos, the left-hand path versus the right-hand path and the crooked path and how to stay balanced in a polarized world, I have talked about the polarization of people and societies into sides or factions. You have for the most part many Wiccans who see themselves as light or good witches and everyone else who doesn't practice the same brand of witchcraft as bad or dark. The mainstreaming of Wicca for the public has strengthened this view of light and dark, good and bad, placing an unbalanced, fuzzy, fluffy rainbow halo over parts of witchcraft and a dark, sinister, bad, evil mist over anything that does not fit into the sanitized mold. And I get it. For hundreds of years, people have been afraid of witches and people have been known to kill what they fear. So mainstreaming and sanitization was needed to some extent to make people feel safe. There is an old saying where I come from, a witch that cannot harm cannot heal. So you're a witch. Oh, don't worry. I won't hurt you. I'm a Wiccan. We can't hurt you because we have the Wiccan read and the rule of three. It's okay. I'm just like you. When you say that, you are effectively saying, I am a neutered witch, so that everyone feels safe in the knowledge that you are still under society's control. The problem is that Wicca is only one type of witchcraft and trying to fit all magical systems into one box just does not work. The magical witch, Wiccan, magician YouTube community talk a lot about this is what I do in my practice or this is my path, which is great and should be something more people pay attention to when commenting. But how does a path become a path and in turn a religion? Well, it all starts with one person. Let's call this person Steve. Steve follows a set of rules throughout the day, week, month, year. He connects with certain energies, believes and knows certain things. Some he has come to by watching and observing others, trying it out, 
and either adopting or rejecting that method, and other parts by pure gnosis. Now after a while, someone asks Steve, hey, what do you do? And Steve tells them. That person tries it out and likes it, and they show and tell another and another, and before you know it, you have hundreds, thousands, millions of people all doing the same thing. Years pass, and now what started as a single person's path has turned into a freeway travelled by many, and now could be called a religion. So when you have many people all following the same idea or way, you have those who want to control how others do this by controlling how they connect, dictating right and wrong behavior. For these people, the world is safe and ordered and manageable when everything has a label and everything has a box. And when you define yourself with a label that many people follow, there is safety in numbers and you see yourself as valid and legitimate because you do or follow something that is socially acceptable because everyone you know does the same thing and doing anything else having your own ideas walking your own path it's just not done it's not right because everyone has to do what I do and everyone else I know does so it is written in the Gospel of Devo in the holy book of the word of our prophet and saviour Steve, O holy one from the sacred garden of beer, may his sacred amber elixir flow freely. G'day, mate. Apologies. I'm Australian and it just slipped out. But hopefully you understand. Every magical system... And as an example, some of the recent traditions of Wicca, initiatory Wicca, um, Gardnerian, Alexandrian Wicca, and I would dare say the new category of uh, popular culture, eclectic Wicca, have all started from one or small core group following a self-devised system that others adopted and then that system took on a life of its own as others added their perspective, and now the originator has no control of the path they started, as it has been taken and turned into a religion. Now, religion comes from the Latin verb religare, and it has been said to say, uh, to tie back, to bind, to hold back, um, to bring closer or to thought from forward progress. So it has a positive side and a negative side. Positively, it is to bring back or to bring closer to the, to the divine. In a negative as aspect, it is to bind back, to hold back, to stop from progressing. So a path can become a religion followed by many, and each follower has his or her own ideas on how that should be done. And like all religions, Wicca being the religion of witchcraft, you have codes, ethics and dogma attached. Now, as I stated earlier, Wicca is one of the fastest growing spiritual religions in America. You have many people growing up in a predominantly Christian-based belief system. For some, their indoctrination into that cult or cultural system was light. For others, it was very strict. Now, before I go any further, I want to reiterate that I am not disrespecting anyone's belief system or the people who were previously in a Christian-based religion. I am simply pointing out possible causes for a symptom. But again, stated in my video, Cleaning the Temple, part one, I said that the human mind from the age of about, from zero to about seven, is in a highly programmable state. Aristotle once said, 
Give me a child until he is seven, and I will give you the man. So you have a large or large groups of people who have been brought up or indoctrinated into Christianity, become disillusioned, and then find Wicca. But all of that previous programming or baggage remains. Unless it is unpacked and looked at for what it is, it will colour the water, and I would dare say it already has, and has contributed to the watering down and mainstreaming of witchcraft. This subconscious programming from childhood manifests in various degrees, from the need to control and dominate others, how they uh, connect and work with deity, the my way or the highway. The need for rules and guidelines for step-by-step -step manuals and the need for conformity which is the antithesis of witchcraft. We see shades of Abrahamic ideas of the one true way coming through with the my way or the highway I have the one true way and the need to prophesize now I know witches don't prophesize. We do not force our views on others. Really? I have seen it happen all the time in the guise of memes written with a tone of haunty arrogance and smug superiority or comments of you're doing it wrong. That's not how you work. That's not how you work with uh, insert deity name here. And videos saying that uh, YouTuber doesn't know uh, what they're talking about. Um, I know what I'm talking about. I have all the answers, blah, blah, blah. Witchcraft is like ice cream. It has many flavours. Just to name a few flavours, we have Alexandrian and Gardnerian wicker. We have American Eclectic wicker. We have Dianic wicker. We have Saxon wicker. We have Astaru, we have Druids, we have Strager, we have Pictish witches, Celtic witches, Sangomas, Inyangas, practitioners of Vaduan, Hoodoo root workers, British traditional witches, cunning folk or pellers, ceremonial witches, eclectic witches, elemental witches, hedge witches, Hereditary witches, solitary witches, Appalachian witches, Cornish witches, Teutonic witches, Shinto witches, fairy witches. It is up to you to find the flavour that suits you. No one flavour is better than any other. It is all a matter of taste. As an exercise, let's look at spirituality this way. Imagine that all magic, religions and spiritual paths were one thing and together they formed a cat. Each part of the cat is a magical or spiritual system. You focus on your magical or spiritual system and only see your own part as you are too close to see anything else. A problem occurs when you start to think that your part of the cat is the only part or your version of that part is better than others. You confuse the part for the whole and become angry or fanatical when others see a different part of the cat than you. Each is a part of the whole but the part is not the whole. You would never show part of a cat to someone who had never seen a cat before and say, this is a cat. No, this is a cat. You're wrong, this is a cat. Please, clearly this is a cat. Amateurs, this is a cat. Dear ones, this is a galactic space command cat. Fools, this is the one and true cat. Lies, you're all wrong. This is a cat. Behold, I give you cat. 
when you are all too close and invested in your part, your perception is limited. When you step back to see all the parts as a whole, you see the interconnection and beauty that is cat. There is a saying that there are many roads that lead to the top of the spiritual mountain. The person wasting their time is the one running around telling everyone they are on the wrong road. Which brings us to the real or fake witches and the fear that will be instilled in many not wanting to be thought of as fake. Many new to the craft will bend over backwards, jump through as many hoops as it takes to get the collective tick of approval from the elusive as well as the self-appointed powers that be. I have said before in previous videos that dressing like a witch does not make you a witch, the same as dressing like a doctor does not make you a doctor. But just because I don't cast a circle the same as you, or if I even cast a circle at all, does not mean I am not a witch. It's like saying, I am a human, and I eat my peas before my carrots, and you are not a human because you eat your carrots first. And don't get me started on what an abomination you are if you don't like carrots at all. It's just absurd. But many feel the need to educate others on the right way. Why? Well, as I have said, many are coming from previous indoctrination, where this was normal. It was what they know, and they are just carrying out the programming. They are polarised into a way of thinking, and in the case of bullies, they are people who are divided internally, and have no inner control, and seek outer control by intimidating and bullying, to keep you in a box so they feel in control. Trolls are these type of people and they come in all walks of life, all religions and magical spiritual systems. They are also energy vampires that feed off of attention, mostly negative attention. Polarized people are a quick and easy meal for trolls. The simple solution is to not engage. Very hard for a polarised person to do. So do not engage. If you do, it will drain your energy. You will not go anywhere. There is a popular misconception that if I state the argument in a concise way, they will see my point of view and or be educated or enlightened on the subject wrong. Your efforts will go and fall on deaf ears. You cannot convince a polarized person as they think they are right and if you are locked in a battle of nitwits with them then you yourself have become just as polarized. Now when you have a situation where someone has been triggered by something you have done or said, they will become very aggressive as they feel that their beliefs have been threatened. It reminds me of the epic fight scene in the movie They Live. The protagonist was trying to get another guy to put on some sunglasses so that he could see the truth. This guy did not want to put the sunglasses on and fought the protagonist aggressively. The fight went on and on and on, with neither willing to back down. Finally, the protagonist managed to put the glasses on the guy. The problem is that this is a movie. In real life, that rarely if ever happens. And all you end up doing is getting on the carousel of doom, going around and around and around, going nowhere fast, having your time and your energy sucked dry, and probably a few bruises and scars to boot. So don't get on the carousel. Understand it for what it is, 
a waste of time. We also have divide and conquer. For some time now, popular culture has been steered into the frenemy, drama-filled life portrayed by unreality TV. I say unreality because it is just that. It's scripted and contrived for maximum ratings. There is nothing real about it. With show after show of the same contrived drama, repeat, 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 we are taught that drama, fighting, backstabbing and infighting, bitching and all of the, the nastiness that goes with it is normal life. And then we as a society repeat what we see. Monkey see, monkey do. When you divide and conquer, when you keep people fighting amongst each other, they have no time to grow spiritually, to come together as a community, to learn and become stronger. If Wicca is the fastest growing spiritual religion, then it should stand to reason that you would want to have infighting to occur. Personal responsibility, empowerment, taking control of your own life is not going to happen when people are in constant conflict with each other. Internally divided people always seek to divide. As within, so without. This has been getting more and more widespread as many become more and more polarized in their beliefs, not just in spiritual and religious movements, but in political, social, sexual, scientific, you name it. This sort of behavior is a virus that infects anyone without a strong enough immune system. I see the magical YouTube community as a melting pot of ideas and ways of doing things an opportunity to share ideas in a global university. YouTube for me is like the witch's sabbat of old, where many would come together and share ideas, spells and recipes, a way of injecting new blood and keeping traditions alive so that they grow and do not stagnate. When you have infighting of any kind, in any religion, political system, and society in general. You no longer have growth. You no longer share ideas. You stagnate and then wither and die. I'm not sure if many of you have taken the time to see what is going on in the world outside of magical circles. We live in an age of information at our fingertips and constant communication. But humans are more unenlightened, isolated and divided than ever before. We stand on a tipping point. It could go either way. In the West, we are very lucky. For the most part, we, are, we can openly say, I am a witch, and practice without the fear of persecution and death. In many other parts of the world, Africa to name one, they are not so lucky, and women, men, children are accused, killed and tortured every day for witchcraft. It was not very long ago that witches and heretics were killed and tortured for believing and thinking contrary to what society deemed was the right way. What I am saying is that humans don't have a very good track record of learning from their mistakes. And if we do not remember and learn from the past, you are doomed to repeat it. If we are so busy fighting amongst ourselves, my spirituality is the right way, my political party is the right way, you're wrong, I'm right, na 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 na. To our detriment, we are so focused on an internal pissing competition, we miss what is happening before our eyes. And in our weakened, divided state, we herald in a new dark age. So what do we do? We lead by example. Don't engage. Don't feed that type of behavior. Work on yourself. If you feel the need to school someone on the right way or that's not how that goddess has worked with, stop. Breathe. 
Maybe ask some more questions. Understand someone else's perspective before you go off half-cocked. Remember, people will only hear what they want and are ready to hear. You cannot teach a pig to sing. Don't try. It's not worth the frustration. Your time is precious. What you focus on, what you spend time on and pay attention to manifests. As witches, you should be a conscious creator. Focus on community, connection, positive education, learning, sharing of ideas, growth. Don't give time and attention to those that wish to divide, derail and sidetrack you from being the best that you and the community can be. Learn to discern what is valid information and what is not. Who is trying to control your connection to deity and who is not? You are the pilot and navigator of your ship. Do your homework. Ask questions. Be respectful of others' beliefs. And if you shut up for five minutes and truly listen, maybe you will learn something new and gain a deeper understanding. I hope if you've made it this far, that you now have a few tools to deal with this type of behavior. And if you see it within yourself, then you can work on changing your behavior. No one likes a bully, a troll, or a zealot. Don't feed them. Don't give them their 15 minutes of fame. Don't get on the carousel. And with time, without food, they too will wither and die. Blessed be. Merry meet, merry part, and merry meet again. If you like this video and want to see more, please click on the links provided. If you think this witchcraft thing may be for you, please subscribe. Blessed be.